My name is Tom Bernacki, and for the purposes of this video, I am not a podiatrist. Nostalgia is a very common disorder that you see in the foot. What does this word even mean? What is metatarsalgia? Basically, it's pain in the ball of your foot, and everybody can have it. So, if you take your foot model, so we're looking at it like this, and you look at this area right here, the ball of the foot. This is ball of the foot pain. So as I'm walking and my foot's hitting here, that is metatarsalgia. But as you can see, there's a lot of stuff in this foot right here that could be damaged. And especially in the bottom of this foot, you can see there's a lot of stuff underneath there that could be damaged. So metatarsalgia pain is ball of the foot pain. What are the symptoms of metatarsalgia? How do you know that this is what you really have? Symptoms of metatarsalgia could be as you wake up in the morning, the front of your foot could hurt. You could have some sharp shooting, zapping pain coming out the bottom of your arch you could have that pain in the morning but at the same time some people get that pain as you go throughout the day and your pain starts to get worse all metatarsalgia as long as it's in the front or the ball of your foot that's the symptoms there's more specific disorders as you can see but you know they all fall under the umbrella of metatarsalgia How do you diagnose metatarsalgia? When you come visit us at the office, or this is something you can even start doing at home, is we would start with an x-ray. So sometimes we see people, they have arthritis through the toes. Sometimes people have a stress fracture through the bone. Sometimes people have a crooked toe, which is landing awkwardly and causing pain in the metatarsalgia region. So, if it's in the ball of the foot, there's a million different things you can have, but some of the most common ones are Morton's neuroma. This is a nerve at the bottom of your foot that gets pinched. So you can see right here, you have nerves that come underneath the toe. If one of these nerves are getting pinched, that's pain that you could be having. So that's a problem you could take care of and we have links on our website to take care of that as well number two another problem that people could have is a stress fracture a stress fracture is different than a traumatic fracture this is when you overdo it walking especially people who spend 12 to 16 hours on their feet so a stress fracture can cause you to break that bone and have issues with that bone as time goes on. So stress fractures are that type of pain where weeks go by and it gradually starts to get worse and worse and worse and worse. So as you can see, there's a lot of different things going on. There's another one, even another third common one is capsulitis and plantar plate injuries. This is when the bottom of your foot right here in the joint, as you can see the bottom joints right here, when they start to get irritated. So right here, the ligaments that hold this toe together, they get swollen, they get thick, they get achy and painful. That is capsulitis. So how does one treat metatarsalgia? The easiest, simplest thing that we'd start off with in the office, whatever the disorder is, and obviously to get the specifics, you gotta see your podiatrist, but we would start off with these guys right here. Actually, I got the wrong one. So grabbing one of these guys right here you can see as the foot comes down on here, right there, it's supporting the arch a little bit better. When you walk and where this lands, it's a little bit cushioned. You can see the back of this insert comes up a little bit higher. So more stress is placed through this part of the foot 
rather than up here. So it's one of those things. If you have heel pain or bottom of the heel pain or pain on the side of your foot, potentially you don't want to transfer the weight from here to other areas. What generally happens to people is you're too tight through the Achilles tendon. So you can see if your Achilles tendon's tighter, you have more pressure on the front of the foot. So, so, so these are the two main criteria of metatarsalgia is you're putting too much pain and pressure on the front of your foot. You want to be able to get it relaxed and come up. So there's two ways to do that, to stretch the muscles back here or with your orthotic to take pressure off of it. See, I could even take some padding and put it across here and this will take a ton of pressure off the front of the foot. This will make a huge difference. So same thing. This works great for metatarsalgia, Morton's neuromas, capsulitis. Lots of issues can be resolved by this treatment option. This works. It almost seems so easy, but it is. That's the, that's the solution. It's making those small little changes that are guaranteed to get improvement. Sometimes people look for injections. Sometimes they look for surgeries, but 90% of the time, that's not what's needed. I'm going to spend a very small amount of time on this. These are the anti-inflammatories, the icing, the creams. The reason I don't focus on this stuff is number one, they work. There's a million things out there and a million people online are gonna try and sell you stuff. Use them if it's 10 out of 10 horrible crippling pain, but it's not how you solve the problem. You're always gonna need more and more of these medications and eventually they do destroy your body. That's why America is really cracking down now on the pain medication epidemic. It's not really a permanent solution. It's kind of like, sinking in a lifeboat and you just keep getting a better and bigger bucket and you never think to plug the hole that's causing the pain. So plug that hole. Home remedies for metatarsalgia. So now we get to the fun part, stuff you can do at home. So number one, the easiest and most practical thing is the thing you're not even gonna like me mentioning. Resting your feet and taking pressure off your feet. You already know what I mean when I say take pressure off your feet. Everybody tries to do it. It's everybody's New Year's resolutions, but it's one easy way out to avoid surgery if that's what you're considering. Number two, most people that come in with plantar fasciitis and metatarsalgia are people who spend 12 to 16 hours a day on their feet. These are nurses. These are factory workers. These are people walking on concrete all day, engineers, you name it. If you can find ways to be able to rest, to wear, to, to stand on sponger floors, to sit down more through the day, to change your job requirements, these are ways to avoid surgery. Next, easy things you can do as well are getting great fitting shoes. This is something that is very confusing to people. And I'm going to take off my shoe right now just to show you a couple things. Here's the basics that you want. Shoes fit in thousands of different ways. This is such an underutilized treatment option. People with foot pain, they don't go to the easiest spot. Every day I hear, I don't want to change my shoes, but at the same time, people don't want foot pain. So you got to choose eventually. If your pain gets bad enough and you're at the point where you're considering surgeries or medications, maybe get a com more comfortable shoe first. It's a great idea. And trust me on this one, it works so well. People think it's almost too simple, so they don't do it. But you got to do it. This solves 90% of the problems. Okay, so I'm going to take off my shoe. This is... I'm not going to go into brand names or anything, but you want to be able to get one fingertip between that tip of your big toe and the shoe. And number two, you want to make sure the back of the heel does not collapse. There's a lot of flimsy fake shoes out there masquerading as shoes. They're no, no better than flip-flops. If I can take my hand and flop all these sides around, it's not a good shoe. You want to be able to push on it and not collapse. Next, see how I can't bend the middle? If I can take a shoe and bend it in a V in the middle, it's not supportive for you. And number three, you want to be able to bend it at the big toe. It's not too, it's not good to be too rigid through the toes, 
as well. You want to make sure they bend a little bit. And lastly, we already talked about this a lot. Not that this is an amazing orthotic by any means, but an orthotic will support the foot. This is the wrong foot for the wrong orthotic. So let me get this right here. If I see that right there, it's supporting the arch. It's not collapsing. And you can use modifications on this insert to take pressure off the front of the foot. These work great. different types of ball of the foot pain, your metatrasalgia, your Morton's neuroma, your capsulitis. You tried using this insert. You tried to stretch your calf muscles. It's just not working. What do you do then? Well, then we have things like injections. So sometimes for especially a Morton's neuroma, you can take a little bit of steroid with an injection that could really cool down the inflammation. I personally am a big fan of just doing it as a diagnostic purpose just to make sure that that's what's going away. It's one of those situations where if you inject where you think the problem is and if it goes away that's likely what the problem was. But if the injection doesn't make the pain go away after once why would you keep injecting that same area? So this will help guide our decision making. Hey, is this even what I have going on? Is it a Morton's neuroma? Is that what's happening? It could be. That's what the injection will tell us. Surgery for metatarsalgia. Surgery is great when you really need it. But if you're watching a video on metatarsalgia, you probably don't have a specific enough answer of what's causing it. If you have a scarred neuroma, then maybe surgery is indicated. If you have a broken bone that's long, that's creating prominence, then yes, surgery might be indicated. If you have a broken bone, a stress fracture, anything along those lines, a biomechanical problem may be addressed with surgery. But if you're looking at a metatarsalgia guide, this is just the starting point. You don't want to jump straight to a surgery. You want to talk with a podiatrist first, figure out what's causing your foot pain, and then you can find more specific treatment options. Don't start thinking like this. Don't, once you start with surgery, even though they work great, it opens up Pandora's box. Even though there's less than a 5% chance that stuff could generally happen, why jump straight to that? when you could most likely take care of it before you even get there by getting a more specific answer.